We're here with Blockchain Bernie, and I want to talk Solana because, man, you're like the Solana Maxi almost from validators to even Xandium now providing storage solutions on Solana. But Solana is not always all that's cracked up to be because there, it does have limitations. Absolutely. Talk to me about those. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, Solana's limitations is what prompted me to to build Xandium, right? And you know, every everything has its limitations, and Solana is great. I and I love Solana. I've built apps on Solana. I've, you know, I've been number one like two, three years ago. Number one on Solana's stack exchange by kudos wow. for about for a few months or so. Right? That's awesome. It's, you get a free uh, ticket to Breakpoint for that? Uh, uh, no, <laughs> they didn't quite give me that. But anyway, <laughs> so Solana's limitations. First of all. You know, Solana has a very opinionated vision, right? Mm -hmm. There is one guy behind it, uh, Anatoly Yakovenko, and he calls himself the co a co-founder. But in fact, he is the founder and he's the, the father of, the, of all those ideas on Solana. And he has a very specific vision. And the vision is, he calls that a global state machine, mm -hmm. right? And um, and also the other part of the vision is blockchain at the speed of Nasdaq. That was the title of his pitch deck in yeah. in the very early days. Um, so with these two things, with with Anatoly's vision, you you can say, okay, that's what he's building, right? And he's laser focused on that. He doesn't look left and right. Um, that's fine. And Solana has two two types of limitations. One within that realm that Antoli wants to build, mm -hmm. right? It is not the perfect global state machine yet. It is not the um, blockchain at the speed of NASDAQ yet. They, are, they keep improving it, mm -hmm. so there's limitations there. But also, that, that's the limitations in kind of the vertical direction. But there's also limitations in the horizontal direction where there's opportunities what Solana could be Besides that initial vision, right? And so there are these these limitations in breadth and there are limitations in depth. No, I right? see. So <clears throat> let's maybe start with, with the limitations within the initial vision, right? Mm -hmm. The global state machine. And global is quite important to him, right? There's things like global price discovery. If you go on Ethereum, everything lives in L2s, and the L2s are not global. They are just local to their own L2. Yeah. They're kind of siloed type of things, and, and Solana's breaking that. It's fast enough to be just one L1, and you have that global state machine and mm -hmm. a global price discovery, and, and Solana's doing great on that. And the global state, where is that global state kept? It is kept in what's called Solana Accounts. Solana accounts is the only place where people can store data on Solana. Um, they are super fast. They don't they don't slow down the blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. With all those, like I think currently we usually have around four thousand uh, transactions a second, and what two thousand five hundred or so of those are vote transactions. The rest is real payload. So we have four figures payload transactions yeah. per second, which is super fast. And the accounts can keep up with that. The, the accounts are super fast. That's because each and every Solana validator keeps those accounts basically in memory. They cannot afford to have them on disk in mm. the validator hardware because then they would be too slow. But that also means that the Solana accounts don't scale with regards to storage capacity. Right? Right. There's just natural limits there. And... Um, We've made that uh, that calculation there with a little spreadsheet that we that we like to show, and um, if you want to store like one terabyte in Solana accounts, and one terabyte, everyone understands that's just a medium sized app. It's right? a bare minimum nowadays. It's for a your bare computer. minimum, right? So <clears throat> for any app that's really successful and has millions of customers, you would need way way more than one terabyte. But even if it's one terabyte. You want to store it on Solana? It's going to cost you one billion dollars, <laughs> right? One billion dollars in what wow. they call rent, right? It's like 
it, it, it's kind of a deposit that mm-hmm. you have to put down to create that account of size one terabyte. <clears throat> There's a size limitation also. I think it's eight megabytes, so you have to use a lot of accounts to oh. get to that one terabyte. Uh, but then you pay that billion dollars. That that yeah, that's just not feasible. Not right? scalable. Not well. It's obviously not something that he is yeah. looking into yeah. Yeah. taking care of. But again, <clears throat> with with great you know. I say I don't want to say misalignments, but with great limitations comes great opportunities as well, right? Absolutely. Well, let me stick to, you know, because I see totally in front of my mind here now, right? And and with what we're building with Xandium, it is an expansion in in breadth, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's making Solana into something that was not part of his initial vision, right? His, his initial vision was just the state machine and doing DeFi. His vision is not <clears throat> to be able to create apps that have customer databases and store a lot of data or something. Yeah. So granted, right? Hey, Tolly, yeah, you didn't create it to, to have a file system and and store exabytes or something. Right. That was not the original. That's our vision. That's Zandium's vision. We're building that and we're extending Solana on, you know, on the breadth um, um, uh, dimension. But even within... Solana's initial vision of mm-hmm. being that global state machine, a uh, blockchain at the speed of NASDAQ, storage already is a limitation because the more apps there are, right? Even the apps that are being deployed, right? People are writing apps, they deploy it. Up until, you know, two, three months ago, it was a real hassle to even deploy an app that's like a few hundred kilobytes, maybe a few megabytes or so. It was not going through, and then you had to do like 30 different tries in order to get it there. They fixed a good part of that. It's way easier now. Um, But yeah, even with with that, um, it's becoming a problem that the accounts don't scale just because there are so many apps, right? And if, if, if we keep exploding like that on Solana, have way, way more apps, way, way more users, it's going to be way, way more accounts, and and it's going to become a problem. Even on on Solana's initial vision, without without, without making it into something that wasn't intended yeah. in the beginning, it's going to be a problem. And you see that also when operating a validator. I'm operating a Solana validator, right? There is a concept called snapshots, right? And the snapshots are well, a snapshot in time of all that global state of yeah. all accounts that exist on Solana. And, you know, they started out to be like, uh, you know, a few hundred megabytes and a gigabyte. And, you know, I remember the days maybe a year ago or so, they were like 20, um, uh, 20 gigabytes. They are now like 95 gigabytes. Wow. And it's growing like crazy, right? Once these things are a couple of hundred gigabytes, they won't be manageable for validators anymore, right? And every time you install a new validator software, you need to start from scratch. So you need to get that that uh, snapshot from somewhere. Then the software needs to read through all that snapshot and build up all the storages and stuff like that. So it is becoming apparent everywhere that... Scaling storage is a big, big issue for Solana, right? And sometimes I say Xandium is a scaling solution for Solana, mm-hmm. and we really are. And then people say, like, well, do we even need a scaling solution? It's the fastest blockchain in the world, mm-hmm. right? But fast is not everything, right? Yeah. We also need storage capacity. And scaling with that storage capacity, that's a big, big limitation um, in Solana these days. No, I love that. I mean, essentially what you're saying is that you're not trying to replace Solana. You're trying to fit in the holes that might be missing, the things that they might have overlooked that obviously we're going to need here in not only short term, but long term as well. Because the larger these account sizes become, the harder it is is going to be for all these validators to be able to store it all. And we're talking about 3,000 validators around the globe that are trying to do this all the time. Yeah, yeah. So how does Xandium solve that problem? Yeah, so we're we're adding a whole new tier of storage, right? There's the Solana accounts, which is kind of the tier one storage. 
And we need that, right? We, you know, there's no need to replace the sauna counts or something. Mm -hmm. They are like, and I like that world computer metaf metaphor, right? Mm. And that came up basically in 2015 with the advent of, of Ethereum and, and Vitalik Buterin um, created it. And with, with the advent of Ethereum, blockchain became programmable. Yeah. And suddenly we could run software on a blockchain rather than run software just on a computer that someone controls. Right. Um, so suddenly we had a world computer that is real decentralized and nobody controls it, right? It's like it's like Satoshi's vision of, you know, not having to play by the rules of some centralized guys, but you know, having the the community, the world, the users control everything. He had it just for currency, Satoshi. Mm -hmm. And then Vitalik came and did it for software, right? We could run software on Ethereum uh, starting from 2015. And then we have that world computer metaphor, right? But if, you, if we really think about world computer, yeah, we can run code on the blockchain. That's the CPU part of the computer. Mm -hmm. And we can... We can store things in accounts. That's the RAM of the computer, right? It's the random access memory, yep. the, 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 the fast memory. But we don't have that disk that each and every other computer has. We have what's called also attached storage or direct attached storage, mm -hmm. DAS. And every computer has been having that for decades. Yeah. Um, just the blockchain doesn't have it, right? So the, the, the world computer metaphor doesn't really hold for um, for any blockchain, for any smart contract platform that's out there. And, and we think that's badly needed to have all the breadth of applications mm -hmm. that we have out there in, in Web2 or in the world or in, in, in enterprise IT or something. We can build any application that we can think of and storing large amounts of data and having databases and it's a is a big part of it. And we just cannot do that on the blockchain. And I went through that on my own when I built my first Solana app in 2022 called NodeStore, um, where we had the first incarnation of, of the Zandium chain. We thought we make our own blockchain. We just use the Solana code. Right now we transitioned to do it all on Solana. But we built Note Store, which was a non-trivial app. Mm. And, you know, I I felt the limitations each and every day, right? Like not being able to really store things in a file system manner, just having to do everything in accounts with all the limitations of the accounts and um, all these type of things. It is really, really a limited programming model that's so much different from you know, the, the, the hundreds of millions of programmers that we have on the world that, that know the normal computer model, right? right? So getting the blockchain closer to that, um, showing developers that, hey, whatever you can build um, <clears throat> on a normal client-server architecture, mm -hmm. you can now build it on the blockchain as well. Finally. Finally, Yeah. <laughs> And, and showing off our demo apps. So one of our key demo apps will be a decentralized version of Wikipedia, right? And the Wikipedia database, by the way, is 250 gigabytes without the media, just mm. the articles, right? And that's already a year old or so, that number. Maybe it's like 300 now, right? Wow. And, um, and that's without the media. So you wouldn't be able to do that on, on any blockchain in, in accounts, right? You would need a storage layer, and, you know, why is it that the accounts don't scale? It's because we always have a redundancy of 3,000, right? Everything I store will be stored on all 3,000 validators. And you can tell that costs a lot of money and it, it, it puts a lid on, on scalability. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we have this set of P nodes, the provider nodes that do the actual heavy lifting of storage. And, um, and there the app can decide what's the redundancy that I need, right? Some apps might just need three P nodes storing right. their data, right? Yeah. Which is okay. Giving that power back to the user is everything, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Now, 
I'm excited about it. I've told you that I'm going to run an old myself. Where can people go and find out more information about this stuff? Yeah, our website is zandium.network. Um, and uh, zandium.network is the website of the Zandium Foundation, uh, which is part of the DAO, and the DAO, you know, administers all that platform. So go to zandium.network, subscribe to all our channels there. The email list is important. The Discord is important. And our Discord is vibrant, right? So there's always people there. We have uh, moderators recruited from the community that help moderate it. Um, I'm on there uh, often. And... Um, and it's a it's the most interactive of all of all media out there, and and X is also important, right? We're we're really keeping people up to date on X, both on on the Zandium Network X account and also on my Blockchain Bernie X account, and um, and you know you can run a P node, right? So that's an opportunity out there, whether it's as early as in our DevNet whether it's later on testnet, both of which are incentivized. Mm -hmm. um, but then starting with mainnet, it's all permissionless. Anyone can just, you know, take our documentation, run a P node, um, help secure the network, help store the data of the world, which, by the way, will be trust anchored, right? Mm -hmm. Not only on Solana, but likely also on the likes of Ethereum and maybe some others. So we will just take certain snapshots Cal calculate these Merkle proofs that we talked about in, in another video and logging them to several blockchains, including um, Ethereum, maybe including even Bitcoin or stuff like that, so that we have a trust anchoring and can have that database of the world, um, you know, completely blockchain grade, trust anchored in different blockchains so that we can make sure that this is the correct data and anchor to even several blockchains. I love that. Bernie, yeah. thank you so much. Guys, this is the time for you to get into this thing because we are talking about the next iteration of Web3. We're talking about empowering devs with you know, the abilities that they've had in Web2 for so long. We can actually finally, finally say that Web3 is ready for prime time once we get these P nodes up and running so that people can build the, you know, the apps that they've wished to build for so long but have been able to. So don't miss the opportunity of getting in this thing at the ground level.